What's up guys, I'm Newbie Dave and today we are making potions. Let's get started. So how's it going guys? So, uh, did a little bit of work off camera. Uh, before this episode, I went exploring a little bit more because I wanted to find some melons. Uh, melons are a good ingredient for potion making and I didn't have any. So I went and explored a little bit more to the west. I found a swamp. Um, I forgot to bring any maps so I wasn't able to mark anything, but I found a swamp, found another ruin portal. Uh, didn't find any melons, but fortunately I did find a wandering trader who was selling melon seeds. So I was able to buy some melon seeds and plant those. Oh, hello. <laughs> and planted those over here next to my pumpkin patch. Uh, they look the exact same when they're growing. You can't really tell which ones are pumpkins and which ones are melons until you get one. Now, when you break a pumpkin, you just get a whole pumpkin. But when you break a melon, you get melon slices. And so it's not quite as efficient unless you use a tool that has silk touch. So if you break a melon with silk touch, you get the full melon. And that's going to save you uh, a little bit of resources because it takes nine melon slices to make a full melon. Now, for this episode, we actually want melon slices, not the melon. So I am going to put this down and break it with my hand to get the melon slices. But if you want full melons, which are good for decorating or... Uh, yeah, decorating is kind of the only thing that comes to mind. Uh, use Silk Touch to break them and you'll get the full melon. And that way you don't have to craft a melon out of nine melon slices. All right, so let's talk about potion making. Potion making is a fantastic part of the Minecraft that, unfortunately, I usually put off until much later in the game. I'm not sure why. I think I typically associate potions with fighting the Ender Dragon, which is something I do much later in the game. But there's a lot of useful benefits to making potions, even earlier on. So to make potions, you're going to need a brewing stand. To craft a brewing stand, it takes one blaze rod and three cobblestone. Now, to be honest, I have never actually crafted a brewing stand in my entire life. Um, I always find them in villages. If you can find a village with a cleric temple like this, then they will always have a brewing stand inside and you can just take them. They're there for you. That's why Minecraft put them there. And so that's where I've always gotten my brewing stands. I've never actually crafted I didn't even know you could craft them until relatively recently. I was kind of surprised by that. So, easy to make. One blaze rod, three cobblestone. Put the brewing stand down and this is the interface. Now, to make potions, you need fuel. Uh, unlike smelting, you can't use any type of fuel. It has to be a specific type of fuel, and the game kind of helps you out by just kind of telling you it has to be blaze powder. <laughs> so you put blaze powder in here. You can see you got a little fuel bar now. And unlike smelting, once you start making potions, it's only going to use as much fuel as it requires to make that potion. Whereas when you smelt or cook something, it's going to use a piece of fuel and even if there's nothing left to smelt or cook, it is just going to continue burning that piece of fuel that is already used. And so you kind of waste the rest of the fuel. That's not the case with a blaze powder in a brewing stand. So that means it's going to last a lot longer, which is really nice. So you need blaze powder for fuel. You also need some glass bottles with water uh, to actually make the potion in. Now, glass bottles are very easy to make. It just takes three glass like this. Same recipe as a bucket, except instead of iron, it's glass. And you get three glass bottles. To fill these bottles with water, you just need a water source like this. And you just use the water bottles, the glass bottles on the water. Now, glass bottles will stack. Once the bottles have something in them, whether it's water or potion, they will no longer stack. So that's very unfortunate. Uh, I think there is a Java update coming that will uh, make potion bottles and water bottles snackable. Hopefully that comes to better recognition as well. So you put the water bottles in the brewing stand. You can brew one, two, or three potions at the same time, and it only takes one ingredient. So there's really never a reason not to make three potions unless you just don't want uh, a bunch of the same type of potion in your inventory. So, blaze powder for your fuel, water bottles to uh, put the potions into, and then you need an ingredient. Now, this is the complicated part with potion making because there are a ton of ingredients. 
Take a look at this chart which came from the Minecraft Wiki. This shows you all the different combinations of ingredients and the different types of potions that they will make. And it's rather complicated, but most potions are going to start with the same ingredient, which is the nether wart. So you throw your nether wart into the top slot of the brewing stand. You see the little bubbles going, that means it's brewing, and you get the little progress bar. Once this fills up, then it's finished brewing, and you get the output, which in this case is an awkward potion. Now an awkward potion, despite the name, is not actually a potion. It's really just the base for making a potion that can be uh, drunk. So now that we have an awkward potion, we can add a different type of ingredient to get different effects. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use sugar, which is going to give me a potion of swiftness. This will give me plus 20% speed when I run, and it will last for three minutes. So that's a really nice potion. As you can see, I got three potions of swiftness from one sugar. So again, there's not really a good reason not to make multiple potions, except for what I'm going to do right now. Now, potions can also be either extended with redstone or enhanced with glowstone dust. If you extend a potion with redstone, it makes it last longer. So this is a potion of swiftness that will last for three minutes. If I add redstone to it, then I have extended it to a potion of swiftness that lasts for eight minutes. Same effect, plus 20% speed, but now it lasts almost three times as long. If I enhance the potion with glowstone dust, then I instead get a potion of swiftness speed two. It does it has twice the effect, it increases your speed by 40%, but it only lasts about half as long, a minute and a half. So that's the case when you enhance a potion. It's going to be more effective, but it's going to usually uh, have a shorter duration. Now, not all potions can be enhanced. Uh, for example, a potion of water breathing, it just makes it so you can breathe underwater. There is no enhanced version of that, uh, but it can be extended to last longer. Not all potions can be extended. For example, a potion of healing has no duration. It's just an immediate effect, but it can be enhanced. So some potions can be enhanced and extended. Some can only be enhanced. Some can only be extended. So that's potion making in a nutshell. Uh, if you are cheap and lazy, this is really all you need. Just a brewing stand, a water source, a bunch of bottles, and a bunch of different brewing ingredients, and you can call it done. So thanks guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. I'm <laughs> Just kidding. Of course, I'm not going to leave it there, because even though I am cheap and lazy, I'm not going to just cut it off there for you guys. I'm going to go all out with this thing and make something a little bit fancy. Now, if you go online, there are a lot of different tutorials for auto brewers, which um, will brew potions for you by just mixing ingredients into a chest or a hopper or something. Uh, the one that I'm going to build is kind of my favorite because I, I like to think of it as a uh, potion making vending machine. Uh, you just go and select the ingredients that you want and it will automatically brew the potion for you. Whereas with other types of auto brewers, you have to put the ingredients into a chest in the right order and kind of know what you're getting. Uh, and so this one's going to look nice and it'll be very simple to use. However, it does take up a lot of space. So let me clear out some of these trees. Okay, so this is going to be the front of our brewing vending machine. It is 24 blocks long, so I had to clear out a lot more space than I thought I was going to. I was going to put this thing pretty close to the path up here, but if I did that, I would have had to start it further over to the left, and it pretty much would have blocked off this whole area. And I eventually want to go around and further to the north on that side. So I moved it back a little bit so I could scoot it a little bit further over to the right. Uh, it is going to go back a little ways, but not very far. Uh, by the time we get to that point, hopefully these trees will finish decaying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my brewing stand right here on the second uh, two blocks over from the corner here. And I'm going to use a lot of uh, spruce wood for this build. We use spruce for... Um, our sugar cane farm over here and yeah I like I like spruce it's a little bit darker than oak if I made this out of oak surrounded by oak trees I think it would just blend in too much so the spruce will stand out a little bit more so yeah, I'll put the brewing stand there and then the rest of the way down we will do spruce planks and then just bring the whole thing up one more level so it's uh, three high okay 
and we actually want to take out these blocks right next to the brewing stand and right above it and we are going to replace those with hoppers. So one's going to go directly onto the side going into the brewing stand. The other one is going to go on top, just like that. Now, because I don't want to see the hoppers, I'm going to put some spruce trap doors over them. And I'll put one here just to make it a little bit more symmetrical. On the back here, we're going to put a hopper going into the side hopper. And then on top of that, one more... Uh, no, that actually, that will be our last hopper. So then on top of that, we will put a double chest. So this double chest is going to hold uh, bottles of water. So underneath this, we're going to put uh, a water source right there and another chest underneath it. Now I want to have lots and lots of glass bottles. Uh, so I'm going to brew up, cook up a whole lot of these things. You can also fish up water bottles if you do a lot of fishing. So that can be another good source of these things. So I'm gonna stick a bunch of glass bottles in here and not all of them. I'm going to take some of these and turn them into water bottles. Like I said, <laughs> these don't stack, and so uh, that's why this is going to be a double chest on top. So we're going to put all of the water bottles in here. You can see they're immediately being pulled out by the hopper, and so these are going to feed. Whoops, not that one. These are going to feed the brewing stand so that uh, as we are making potions, they will just automatically replenish with new water bottles. So you can see there's already water bottles in here. If we brew up a potion and take the potion out, it immediately gets replaced with another water bottle. So I'm gonna fill up this double chest with water bottles. And that should last us for quite some time. Because it's not just the water bottles in the chest, there's also water bottles in each of these hoppers. And if we do run out, we've got another almost full stack of uh, glass bottles in this chest below it and a water source to make more water bottles. So this chest and these hoppers will keep the brewing stand filled with water bottles as we make all the potions that we want. This hopper on top is going to feed ingredients into it. Uh, the only other thing that we will need is a bunch of blaze powder. Now blaze powder lasts for a long time. You can brew a whole lot of potions with it and you can stack a bunch of blaze powder in here. So we don't really need a source to automatically feed more blaze powder into this. We'll just stick some blaze powder in and if we run out in the future, we can just add more. Now on the front here, next to this trap door, we're going to place a button and above that an item frame. And in this item frame, I'm going to put the ingredient that will get added to the potion when I push this button. Oh, and apparently that will also open the trap door. <laughs> That's unintentional. Uh, might need to rethink that. Now before I put this in here, I want to name it on an anvil. And this is going to help me remember what each of the ingredients does. So the nether wart is going to create awkward potions, so I will name this awkward. Uh, you can name an entire stack of items and it only costs 1 XP. Whereas if you do it one at a time, each one is going to cost 1 XP. And so every nether wart in this stack is going to end up being named awkward. So I'll name that whole thing awkward, I'll put one in there, and now when I look at this, I know, oh, I'll get an awkward potion when I click this button. So now we need to work on the back side of this, and for that, we are going to need a dropper. A dropper is a new type of block that we haven't talked about yet. It is made from, it's almost exactly like a dispenser, and the recipe for it is very, very similar. The dispenser, you remember, is made from a bow, redstone, and cobblestone. A dropper is the exact same, but without the bow. Uh, it's a very slight difference between the two. A dispenser is going to use or dispense the item inside of it when it receives a redstone signal, uh, which, it, as we saw with the iron farm, will like empty out a bucket of water or pick up water if you have an empty bucket. If you put an arrow in a dispenser, it will shoot the arrow. A dropper, on the other hand, will just drop whatever it has, like when you, you know, drop an item on the ground. So for this build, we want a dropper. Now right behind the button, we want to put a redstone torch on the wall like that. And then we want a dropper right next to this facing up. So I'm going to place a temporary block on the ground and then place a dropper facing up right above that. The hole should be on top like this. It should not be on the side. Uh, so make sure you get that facing the right direction. Inside that dropper, we're going to place the rest of our awkward nether wart. And 
We'll go around and test this. When I click the button, the dropper should shoot another wart up into the air. So the button is going to deactivate the redstone torch and then it will reactivate when the button switches off, which will send a redstone signal into the dropper, making it drop one nether wart and it will go straight up. All right, so that dropper is going to drop or shoot out the thing inside of it straight up. And so we want to put a hopper on top of it. And now the nether wart will go up into the hopper. And that's actually facing the wrong way. I always get confused with this because you have to sort of build it backwards. So we eventually want this to go into this hopper that goes down into the brewing stand. So we need to build the hoppers out this way first. So we want two hoppers going into that one and then we can build these out going into or above the dropper. So now the dropper will shoot the nether wart up into this hopper. This one will pull it out, that one will pull it out and it just creates this sort of train uh, that will pull it all the way over into the brewing stand. So let's test this out. We've got our brewing stand that's already got some water bottles in it. Let's push the button. Now it does take it a second for it to travel through all the hoppers, but once it's done, it ends up in the top of the brewing stand. We can see it is another wart that will make an awkward potion because we named the whole stack. And once that's done, then we will have three awkward potions ready for the next ingredient. So the rest of this is going to be filled out with all the other brewing ingredients that we can use. Now I'm going to replace this section right here with, with some actual spruce logs. Now because pretty much all of the potions are going to start with nether wart, I put that one up front and I'm going to separate it from all the others, both spatially and visually with this uh, sort of wall of spruce there. Then the rest of these are going to be all the ingredients that can be used for potion making. Now there's 11 different ingredients that can be used to make potions, but if I'm being honest, there's some that I'm just never going to use. I'm never going to make a potion of the Turtle Master with turtle shells. Turtle shells are a huge pain to get and the potion is not even that useful. It gives you resistance and also slows you down significantly. I'd rather just have better armor and not get slowed down. I'm never going to make a potion of leaping. I don't care about jumping higher. So I, and I don't want to go track down rabbit's feet, so I'm never, I'm never going to make those two potions. But I am probably at some point going to make the other nine, so I need nine uh, spots here for all the different ingredients. So we'll do nine buttons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine item frames above that. Now, again, we're going to create a visual separation here. And past this, we'll go some additional, uh, did I get this right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Okay, I made this thing too long. <laughs> I think I was originally planning for all 11 ingredients. Oh well, that's fine, I can take some off the end. Uh, on this side, we are going to have, I believe it's five different ingredients. So one, two, three, four, five. And these are going to be the different enhancing effects. So we've already got talked about our uh, redstone and glowstone to enhance and extend a potion. You can also use gunpowder to make it into a splash potion. That's a potion that you can throw and it will have a splash effect. Uh, later when we fight the ender dragon we can get some dragon's breath to make lingering potions. And uh, you can also use fermented spider eye to corrupt a potion. So those are the five different ingredients that can be used to modify a potion. And those will go down here on the end because they need to be added, in most cases, after the typical potion ingredients. So on the back side here, we'll go add a redstone torch to the back of each of these. And I'll go ahead and fix the length of this right now. Now next to each of these redstone torches, we also need to put another dropper. So I need to go make a couple more of these things. Okay, so dropper here. Okay, and then finally, we need to extend this chain of hoppers all the way down. This is going to require a lot of hoppers, which is going to require a lot of iron. But fortunately, we have our unending supply of iron from our iron farm right next door. So that's not a big deal. 
Now I'm also going to want to put some item frames on the back side of this so that I know what material goes in each uh, dropper. I don't want to have to go down the line and you know, look at each one, especially if it's empty and I need to know which one to refill. Uh, I want to know which, what goes in each hopper on the other side. So let me make 15 more item frames. Boom. <clears throat> and rather than putting these on the droppers, I'm going to put them on the hoppers. Uh, that will make sense in a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take one of these awkward nether warts out and put it in that item frame. So now when I run out, I can come back here and know, oh, this one is for the nether wart. So I'll put more nether wart in this hopper. Now you could use signs for each of these as well, but again, it's not as fancy. I like, I like the item frames. So let's start filling some of these up with some ingredients. Now I don't have all of the ingredients available right now, but I do have a lot. So let's see, golden carrots are going to get us night vision. So let's name these night vision. Uh, magma cream can be used for potions of fire resistance. Now blaze powder is interesting because in addition to being used as a fuel source for brewing, it can also be used to make potions of strength. So it has a dual purpose. So I'm going to try to organize these in order of what I think I'm going to use most often. So I'm probably going to do swiftness a lot because I can just use that around my base. So I'll put that first. And then I'll load up this dropper with the rest of those. All right, so like I said, I'm missing a few. I need uh, phantom membranes to make uh, potions of slow falling and we won't be able to get the dragon's breath until we actually go to the end and fight the dragon. But I had everything else, so I've got everything uh, set up here. So we'll test this out really fast. We've already made our awkward potion with nether wart. Uh, let's do some water breathing. So I wanna do water breathing, and I'm going to extend it so it lasts longer. So I'll add some redstone. So come back over here. We can see that the water breathing puffer fish, and once that's done, we get our redstone to extend it so it'll become an eight minute potion of water breathing instead of three minutes. So at this point, you could be done. You could just top this thing off, put it back on it and say, we've got our automatic brewing vending machine. I like to think of it as a vending machine because you just push the buttons and you get you know, the treat that you wanted. So this is a fantastic build, I love it. And we could just call it done here, but there's one more thing I want to do on this. Uh, from the front here, there's some information that we're not getting just yet. So let's say I want to make a potion of regen. Come over here, push the regen button. Come over to the brewing stand. Wait for the guest here to show up. And nothing happens. No guest here. Why am I not getting a potion of regen? Well, that's because if I come around to the back here, I realize the dropper's empty. There are no guests here because I only had one. And so, it would be really nice to be able to see from the front here which ingredients you have in stock and which ones are empty. So that's going to be the remainder of this build is setting up a redstone circuit on the back for each of these to notify us when uh, they run out. Okay, so for this part of the build, we're going to need 15 redstone repeaters and it's 15 because I have 15 different uh, ingredients. The nether wart, the nine regular ingredients, and the five enhancement ingredients. So 15 redstone repeaters, 15 redstone comparators, and 15 redstone lamps in addition to 30 more redstone torches. So each of these is going to get a repeater, a comparator, a lamp, and two more torches plus some additional building blocks. So let's take just a moment and talk about these redstone devices that we're introducing. When you have a redstone signal, uh, it starts with strength 15, and as it travels down a circuit, it's going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. You can see the color diminishes, and eventually it's going to wear out and there is just no more redstone signal. So your repeater can be added anywhere in the circuit, and it repeats that signal at full strength. Regardless of how strong it is coming into that repeater, it repeats at full strength. The other nice thing that a repeater does is if you have redstone next to other redstone, it will connect to itself and branch off. So if you want to build two circuits side by side that don't connect, you can't do that with redstone, but you can do it with repeaters. 
So these two repeaters are not connected to each other. So that's why we're using repeaters for this build is because we want each circuit to be its own standalone circuit and not connecting to the ones next to them. Now a comparator will compare, uh, it will check the input on this side and emit a redstone signal if some condition is met. So for example, you can place a comparator next to a chest and it will light up if that chest has anything in it, but it will not light up if the chest is empty. So if we put some redstone on this side, put something in the chest, then we can see it emits a redstone signal. Finally, the redstone lamp will light up when it receives a redstone signal. So if we put a redstone torch here, connect it to the lamp, the lamp lights up. So now you might be able to see how all this stuff is coming together. So we're going to use comparators on each dropper to emit a redstone signal when the dropper has items in it. And then we need to connect that signal up to a redstone lamp that will be on the front to let us know when the dropper uh, is empty. So to start with, we're going to put redstone lamps on the top of this above each ingredient, just like that. Now we'll go around to the back and we'll start with, we'll do one whole circuit first. So we'll do a comparator right here and that this, the side with the two redstone torches needs to be facing the dropper. So you need to be facing the direction that you want this thing to go. So back up against the dropper, jump and place the comparator. So this is going to need to go into a block right here, which will transmit the redstone signal through the block to a redstone torch above it. Now when a redstone torch receives a redstone signal, it actually turns the torch off. So because this torch is receiving a signal from the comparator, it is actually turned off. If we remove the comparator, it turns back on. Or if the comparator uh, is not emitting a signal, then the torch will turn on. So above this redstone torch, another block, and another redstone torch on that side. On the hopper, you will place your repeater, and then one more block in front of the redstone lamp. So redstone signals will pass through uh, one block, so we don't actually need like a repeater or redstone dust. That block acts as part of our signal. And so now, this signal from the redstone comparator travels through this block, into the redstone lamp, up through that block, into that lamp, into the repeater, and through this block to the redstone lamp uh, on the front here. So because there is something in this dropper right now, the lamp is lit up. If the dropper is empty, you can see the signal, the whole circuit reverses itself and the lamp turns off. So that's why we had to put the item frames on the back on the hoppers instead of the droppers is because this block right behind the dropper needs to be taken up by the comparator. So now I just need to replicate this circuit 14 more times for all of the other droppers. All right, so we've got all of our circuits hooked up and now you can see from the front which items we have in stock and which ones are missing. Uh, for example, the corrupt uh, fermented spider eye we are out of. And so if I come around back here, I can check the hopper and sure enough, it is empty. But we've got gunpowder, we've got uh, glowstone dust, redstone dust. So this is really going to help us out. Uh, let's find a good example. Um, I'm going to make some fire resistance potions. So to test this thing out, I'm going to come back here, find my fire resistant dropper, remove all but one magma. And so we've got our water bottles, everything's primed. So we'll do an awkward potion, fire resistance. That should flick off, good. And we will uh, extend it so it lasts longer. Beautiful. So the item frames on the back are really gonna help when we need to come restock this thing so we don't have to count or try to remember which thing's in which dropper. Just come around back, find the dropper with the ingredient, find the item frame with the ingredient that we want and open the dropper. So I'm going to close this thing in now so it's uh, a nice enclosed building. And with that, y'all, I think we are done. So I finished uh, building the outside structure. 
Uh, we've got a door here where we can get inside to maintain this thing. Uh, as I was building it and breaking some of the blocks on top and everything, I noticed that some of the pieces ended up into going into the hoppers. So you might want to check the, the very last hopper at the end here to see if you have any uh, planks or logs or anything in it that might clog up the system before you start making potions. It is a little tight, but we can get in here to restock the droppers if, uh, if we need to when things run out. And also, built a ladder going up top here because we have a secret nether wart farm. Since nether wart is going to be the most commonly used ingredient for all of our potions, it makes sense to continue to grow more here in the overworld. And what better place to do it than right here on top of our uh, potion vending machine. Uh, the ceiling is sunken down a little bit, it's got this nice lip around it, so you don't see the nether wart from outside, but you can get to it by climbing up the ladder. One last thing I want to do that I almost forgot about is I'm going to put down these two lecterns and I made some books. Uh, you can write in books by creating a book and then using uh, a feather and an ink sack to create a book and quill. And with a book and quill you can actually write in the book. So I made some books that I'm going to put on these uh, lecterns by the uh, brewing station. And one of these books just includes some basics on how to create potions. You know, you start with another wart to make an awkward potion, use gunpowder to make a splash potion, so on and so forth. How to make um, some of the special ingredients like the fermented spider eye and glistening melon. And then the other book includes all of the different potions, the effects, their duration, what, how they're made. Uh, and this way I can check all these things in-game, and if I forget something I don't have to go to an external website. It's all just right here next to my brewing station. So that's entirely optional, but highly recommended, especially if you're pretty new to potion making like I am. So that's going to wrap things up for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something about potion making. If you're enjoying the series, please like this episode, and please subscribe so that you get notified of future episodes as they come out. Uh, as mentioned in my previous episode, I'm going to try to start doing these weekend updates. I've already got one planned for this weekend that I'm really looking forward to. I think you're going to like it, so please stay tuned, and thanks guys. Have a great day.